hi there this is the aptitude guy now you've already seen the title and the thumbnail of the video so you already know what the video is about this is about the previous year's questions of tcs and qt so let's get started this is the first question please pause the video try to solve it yourself and then unpause it and there you'll have the solution the answer is 25 if you got it congratulations please move on to the next question if you did not get it then here is the solution a geometry box and a pencil box together cost 150 rupees all right so let's take the geometry box is g and the pencil box is p they both added to be 150 rupees cool the cost of the geometry box g is 100 rupees more than that of the pencil box so g equals p plus 100 okay what is the cost of the pencil box in rupees so obviously we need to convert everything in terms of the pencil box and fortunately that is already done for us just substitute this over here g becomes p plus 100 p becomes p itself equals 150 so we have 2p equals 150 minus 100 that is equal to 50 so obviously p equals 25 that is the answer and we are done let's move on to the next question this is the next question pause the video try to solve it and then unpause it the answer is a 53 if you got it amazing if you did not get it here is the solution now for these kind of problems you will find plenty of different types of solutions online but the easiest one that i have ever found goes like this you just talk about the seller and how much money he receives and how much money he loses that's all okay so you add and subtract accordingly let's see so we have the seller over here we have the seller over here now the seller first receives a 60 pound check okay so plus 60 now from the 60 he gives away 30 pounds to the cyclist he gives it back to him because that was the balance amount so minus 30 now after that the check bounces so he has to give the entire 60 rupees uh, sorry 60 pounds back to the neighbor so that is minus 60 again and on top of that the cycle cost him 23 pounds so that is another thing that he loses so minus 23 so what do we have here plus 60 and minus 60 gone so ultimately the answer is minus 30 minus 23 that is equal to minus 53 so a total of 53 pounds of loss that is the answer let's move on to the next question pause the video try to solve it you know the drill the answer is c straight line if you got it congratulations if you did not get it the solution is right here this question can be solved in two ways one is the visualization method that way you can visualize the graph and then solve it or there is a shortcut i'll tell you both now first of all what do you mean by tuples tuples are nothing but x and y coordinates nothing too fancy about it so let's first solve this with the graph method we have the y-axis we have the x-axis we have one two three four five six and one two three four five six okay the first one one comma two one comma two is over here obviously after that we have two comma four two comma four is obviously here and then we have three comma six three comma six is obviously here obviously this is a straight line done now another way to do it like i told there's a shortcut the shortcut is you have one comma two two comma four and three comma six now when we find the difference amongst the x's and the y's it should be in an arithmetic progression for example let's check the x's one two three arithmetic progression and the y's two four and six again an arithmetic progression 
So when the coordinates are an arithmetic progression, we can be 100% sure that the answer will be a straight line. That's it. There you have it. Let's move on to the next question. This is the next question. You know what to do. Pause the video, try to solve it and then come back. The answer is A, 2 by 7. If you got that, congratulations. If you did not, then here's the solution. Now first, I'll tell you the shortcut behind such questions and then I'll tell you the logic behind that. Now whenever you have such a question, one thing that will be common is 53. They will always ask you 53. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, that can differ. That doesn't change the answer at all. 53 will be common, that is for sure. Now, if at all they ask you this question in a leap year, then the answer will be 2 by 7. Now, if they ask you in a normal year, then the answer will be 1 by 7. Okay, normal year, 1 by 7, leap year, 2 by 7. Now, why so? I'll explain that to you right now. A leap year has 52 complete weeks and 2 extra days. How do we know that? A leap year has 366 days. 366 days. Now, when we divide it by 7, why 7? Because a week has 7 days. The quotient will be 52 and the remainder will be 2. That means we have 52 complete weeks. This means 52 Mondays are guaranteed. That is for sure. The probability of 52 Mondays is 1 by 1. 100% probability. But they are asking 53 Mondays. What are the chances of 53 Mondays in a leap year? Now we have 2 extra days remaining. Now those 2 extra days can be what all? It can be Sunday, Monday. It can be Monday, Tuesday. It can be Tuesday, Wednesday. It can be Wednesday, Thursday. It can be Thursday, Friday. It can be Friday, Saturday. It can be Saturday, Sunday. And then again, back to square one. Now they are asking, what are the probabilities of 53 Mondays? In this entire sample space, how many times do you see Mondays? You have this one and this another one. There are two such possibilities. So only two favorable outcomes. Out of how many outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have two favorable outcomes out of seven total outcomes. So what is that probability? 2 by 7. That's it. That is the answer. And this will not change no matter what day they ask. If they ask for 53 Wednesdays instead of Mondays, how many Wednesdays do you see? 1 and 2. That's all. Again, 2 by 7. If they ask for 53 Fridays, then again, there's one Friday, there's another Friday. So it will always be 2 by 7 when it's a leap year. And if it's a normal year, it will be 1 by 7. That's it. Simple as that. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video, try to solve it and then unpause. The answer is A, 1 by 36. If you got that, amazing. Congratulations. If you did not, here is the solution. Do not get intimidated because of the size of the question. The solution is smaller than the question. Let's do it. Arun wrapped a gift for his friend in a big box which contains four small boxes. Okay, We have one big box that has four smaller boxes. Each of these small boxes again contains three boxes. So each box has three smaller boxes each. Each of these boxes contains three smaller boxes again. Again three. The gift is randomly kept is in one of these smallest boxes. If you can open one of these smallest boxes, what is the probability that the gift is in it? That's it. So what is the favorable outcome? How many In how many boxes do we have the gift? In only one box. And how many total number of boxes are there? 1 into 4 into 3 into 3. How much is that? 1 into 4 into 3 into 3. That is nothing but 36. So 1 by 36. That's it. That is the answer. I told you the solution is smaller than the question. We are done with this. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video. Try to solve it.
the answer is b 7.5 if you got that congratulations if you did not here is the solution Vilan and Karan together can build a bridge in five hours. Now, when it comes to time and work questions, obviously we need to work with their efficiencies. So we have the efficiency of Vilan plus efficiency of Karan. That is equal to one by five because work done by time taken. One full bridge in five hours, one by five. Now, Karan works twice as long as Vilan does if he has to do the job alone. That means Karan is slower. That means Velan's efficiency is twice as much as Karan's. It says Karan works twice as long as Velan if he has to do the job alone. That means Karan takes twice as long. That means Karan is half as efficient as Velan. That means Velan's efficiency is equal to twice as Karan's efficiency. Okay. Another way to look at it is this way. We can just assume that time taken by Karan is equal to time 2i's into time taken by Velan. Okay. So we know one thing that efficiency is inversely proportional to time taken. That means when it comes to efficiency, it will get reversed. So efficiency of Velan is equal to twice as efficiency of Karan. Now they are asking how long will it take Velan to complete the job alone? Alright, so we need to convert everything in terms of Velan. So what is the efficiency of Karan? Efficiency of Karan is efficiency of Velan divided by 2. All we have to do is substitute it over here. That's it and we will get the answer. Let's do it. Efficiency of Velan plus now, efficiency of current is equal to efficiency of Velan by 2. This is equal to 1 by 5. Let's solve it. This is 3 efficiency of Velan by 2 equals 1 by 5. So, efficiency of Velan is equal to 1 by 5 into 2 by 3. That is equal to 2 by 15. So, the time taken by Velan is obviously the reciprocal of this that is 15 by 2 that is equal to 7.5 and that is the answer that's it and if they had asked you how long would current take to complete the entire job alone we already know that current takes twice as long that time the answer would have been 15 that is d okay we are done with this let's move on to the next question take your time read it solve it carefully pause it and then unpause it. The answer is C 23 by 29. If you got that, that's amazing. If you did not, here is the solution. Now they are asking, this building is a tall lean tower with 24 floors. Its security chief, this guy is very popular, notorious depending on blah blah blah, among the visitors. Once a visitor asked him the ratio of people in 24th floor to those in the ground floor. He said if four persons are added to both the flows, the ratio of the fraction becomes 9 by 11. Four persons added to both the flows. Okay. So it will be x plus 4 divided by y plus 4. Let x be 24th floor and y be the ground floor. Then the ratio will become 9 by 11. And if 5 move out of each of the flows, then the result will be 3 by 4. So, x minus 5 divided by y minus 5 will be equal to 3 by 4. This is what we have. Now, we have two equations and two unknowns. Obviously, we can find the answer. Let's simplify this first. How to simplify? Cross multiply. Let's do that. 11x plus 44. And we have 9y plus 36 okay if you simplify this further how much do you get you get 11x minus 9y equals minus 8 okay let's do this one now cross multiply we have 4x minus 20 equals 3y minus 15 so we have 4x minus 3y equals 5. 
okay now the best way to solve it would be let's uh, cancel out one of the variables how to do that we have 11x minus 9y we have 4x minus 3y so we can just multiply the second equation by 3 we can just multiply this by 3 and we can subtract it from the first equation so if we multiply this by 3 how much does it become we get 12x minus 9y equals 15 okay let's subtract this and this let's see what we get 12x minus 11x is x minus 9y minus minus 9y is 0 and then 15 minus minus 8 is equal to 23 so x is equal to 23 that means d is wrong and a is also wrong the answer is either b or c b is also 23 c is also 23 now let's find y we can just substitute this in one of the equations and then find y when you substitute it after a few seconds you will get y equals 29 and there you have it you have the answer this is slightly time consuming it's not a tough question it just consumes a little bit of your time it's simple it's easy it's just time consuming that's it let's move on to the next question pause the video try to solve it and then unpause the answer is b2500 if you got that that's amazing if you did not here is the solution whenever a force acts on a body obliquely it splits into vertical and horizontal components obliquely means diagonally like this at an angle it splits into horizontal force and vertical force that is what it means so basically what that means is oblique force is equal to vertical force plus horizontal force that's it now they are telling if the force acting on the stone has the same horizontal and vertical components of value 2500 by 4 by 2 what is the value of the oblique force okay so the question is telling us literally telling us that the vertical force and horizontal force both are equal that is 20 uh, 2500 by 4 by 5 okay let's do that so the vertical force is 2500 by 4 by 2 plus horizontal also is the same 2500 divided by 4 by 2 i think i said 4 by 5 initially sorry about that it's 4 by 2 obviously this is equal to 2500 by 2 plus 2500 by 2 that is obviously equal to 2500 done it's just that simple let's move on to the next question pause the video try to solve it unpause the video answer is b25 if you got that that's pretty impressive actually if you did not here is the solution okay let's write it down first of all we have 8 minus i 8 plus j then we have 8 minus k then we have 8 minus l and we have 8 plus m this is equal to 3 9 2 7 all right now one thing about 3 9 2 7 is that it's an odd number if that is an odd number then all of them each and every one of them is an odd number why because even if one of them is an even number notice that all of them are getting multiplied all of them are getting multiplied if any one of them is an even number then the final product cannot be an odd number because we all know odd into odd is equal to odd but odd into even is equal to even we know this we know this it doesn't matter how many odd numbers you have even if you have one even number the final product will end up being even in order to get an odd product you need all of them to be odd that's the requirement now if all of them are odd every single one of them is odd then obviously i j k l and m they also will have to be odd why because 8 is an even number even minus odd is odd even plus odd is also odd if any one of them is an even number then 8 minus even will be even or 8 plus even will also be even 
so that is not possible so each and every one of them is an odd number now they are telling that all of them are positive integers in ascending order so let's just randomly write the first smallest odd numbers in the ascending order 1 3 5 7 9 now one thing we can do is we can substitute all of this in this in this equation and then see if the product is actually equal to 3927 once you do that you will see that this arrangement is absolutely correct let's see what the sum is 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 7 is 16 plus 5 is 25 so the answer is 25 so a little bit of trial and error is also required over here all right we are done with this question let's move on to the next question that will be the last question of this video take your time go slow pause the video try to solve it and then unpause the video the answer is b 150 grams if you got that that's pretty impressive again if you did not get it here is the solution using the principle of moments one can weigh any item using a single weighing stone in one such experiment a food packet was kept hanging at a distance of 15 cm to the left of a rod center it was countered by a 50 g weighing stone kept at a distance of 45 cm to the center of to the right of the center what's the weight of the food packet okay basically what the question is saying is this we have a center point like this and then there is a rod on top of it okay the stone the balancing part is not in the middle of the rod that's the point so this part is 15 cm and this part is 45 cm okay and the 45 cm one has 50 50 grams 50 grams weighing it down and we have to find how many grams is over here that is the question now one thing about such questions is that there has to be an equilibrium since it is balanced there has to be some kind of equilibrium what is the ratio between the distances between the two basically what is the ratio between these two we have 15 and we have 45 what is the ratio between the distances we have 15 is to 45 that is equal to 1 is to 3 now in order to reach equilibrium in order for the entire rod to be straight like that we need the ratio of the weights to be the exact opposite of the ratio of the distances so the ratio between the weights that is x is 250 needs to be the opposite of 1 is to 3 that is equal to 3 is to 1 so obviously x will be equal to what we all know x by 50 is equal to 3 by 1 so obviously x is equal to 150 grams that is the answer and there you have it we reach the end of part 1 part 2 will be up very soon Thank you so much please watch the video again if you did not understand anything and comment if you have any doubts and consider subscribing thank you so much